Okay, this video is called, Is it Time for the Irish Hedgerow Schools? So, what the Irish Hedgerow Schools was about is that Britain had conquered Ireland and largely enslaved the Irish people. In the mid-1600s, Cromwell in particular closed down all their schools, called the Bardic Schools. Um, in the 1700s, they had these terrible penal laws. Uh, the Irish were really not much better off than slaves. And they forbid the Irish to be educated in the Catholic religion. Uh, they forbid teaching them Gaelic language, uh, the written Gaelic language, learning Irish history, Irish music. Uh, the Queen Elizabeth of the ancient days used to kill all the Irish musicians. That's partly one of the reasons why they have the, the harp as a prominent uh, symbol of Ireland and Irish history uh, for that reason. So... Here's a painting of an Irish hedgerow school. So what, what it, what's meant by hedgerow schools is they weren't allowed to learn their own history and music and traditions um, in the regular schools. There were only Protestant schools. Uh, so they made their own Irish schools and they were taught out by the hedgerows in the fields. Often they were taught, you know, inside homes or barns and that was called, you could call it homeschooling of that day. But the key point was that's how they maintained their traditions alive through the hedgerow schools. Um, I just show you this one picture. This is my father. He, you know, my father and his two brothers, they were so poor growing up. I saw the house. I went and visited it. They just had a dirt floor. Um, and they really love talking about books. You know, this is sort of like, that's a one characteristic thing of the Irish. I've given previous lectures before about how the Irish saved civilization by the Irish monks uh, copying all the ancient books coming out of Rome. Um, and with Greek as well, Greek history. So anyways, I show you this though, just my father became a doctor, uh, his brother was an engineer physicist, and the other uncle was a doctor too. So, you know, given a fair chance, the Irish were fantastic at school. They loved reading. My dad's brothers would come over and they would talk about reading, okay? Uh, they loved reading about books, and that inspired me to um, want to be like my dad, be a reader, you know? My dad was a boxer to get a scholarship and part to college, um, that kind of inspired me to be a wrestler, and um, that was really good for me. They didn't know much about food. You know, you got a little double chin there, and he had a myocardial infarction at 51 years of age. He's actually pretty famous for his inventions. He sort of invented, well, I'm, I'm not going to get into all his inventions, but he's a brilliant guy. This guy's kind of smart, but he's a little mean, but his, his orneriness motivated me to read more. So anyways, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the Irish schools here. Okay, the penal laws came out in the mid-1700s, you know, William of Orange, and, you know, you hear the Protestants sort of introduced to Northern Ireland were called the Orangemen. Um, let's see, what else can we say about this? Oh, and so I say, why, why am I even talking about this? Because nowadays we find ourselves almost in a similar situation in America that the public schools have gotten so bad, they're not just bad. They're evil. I mean, what do they do? There's The economy's so bad nowadays that most women work, okay? And that's a way to get the mothers out of the house quickly so they can get the children into school at a younger age, like preschool age, and they can start, you know, putting them into this social conditioning. What the public schools typically do is they tell them, they teach the children to reject their parents' values, to reject their parents' religion. They teach them to be atheists, that there is no God. And all of this stuff makes a child weak. The people who love a child the most are the mother and father. There's no one even close to that. Um, and they're the ones who want the best for the kid. They might not have all the education, sophistication, etc., but their heart's in the right place. They do the best by their kid. So public schools don't care about these children. You know, there's some really good teachers, and some of these individual teachers really do, but the teachers are, you know, they have to work within their system. It's kind of like a doctor. You can have a doctor who wants the best for their patient, but if they're in a system where they're just pressured to sell drugs and go faster, faster, faster. Let me move this thing up here. Oops. I want to catch this thing and move it up. They're pressured to go faster, faster, faster and sell drugs. It's hard for them to do as well as they might. You know, if they're not educated in nutrition and toxicology like most of them aren't, um, it's kind of hard for them to teach kids, to teach patients what they need to know. So the system has a big effect on the practitioner. And so what I'm saying is the public school system is determined centrally at some educational place and all these teachers are, are forced to follow it. And so they really provide a terrible education. How much does anyone remember of their grade school and high school education? About the only thing I could remember was I learned how to type. I remember that one of my English literature teachers was nice to me. Another English literature teacher was interesting. 
Um, we had a psychology teacher who was nice and interesting, but I remember very little from grade school and high school. Um, and also, like I said too, the only math I use is uh, stuff I knew by fourth grade. So math is very much overemphasized. I actually think that math kind of makes people stupid because they spend so much time learning math and they don't learn about other things that really matter in life. You know, learn about marriage, buying a car, buying a house, starting a business. Okay, anyways, um, so what am I saying? The Protestants also were very nasty to the Catholics, including the Irish, when they came over to the United States. And they didn't allow Catholic education, really, in the school system, didn't treat the Catholic students very well. So the Catholics formed their own school system. And what I'm basically saying is, you know, parents, if, you know, my kids are grown up now, but if I had young kids, I wouldn't want them in the public school system. The best you can do is homeschooling, but it's hard for parents to have time, you know, to do that because often they don't have the money, they have the resources, they got to go work. Uh, but I think some form of, you know, the Catholic school system, it's okay. It's not really that great at education, but it's a million times better than the public schools at teaching values and religion and respect. Because um, I, I had the experience as a young person of going both to public schools and the Catholic schools, and that was many years ago, but there was a dramatic difference. At the Catholic schools, I would say the education was about the same as the public schools. It was not very good. But the behavior was a thousand times better. There was no drugs. There were no fights. There were no kids having sex at the public schools. I'm sorry, at the Catholic schools. At the public schools, there were, you know, divorced parents. Kids would go to the divorced parents' houses where there's no adult in the house. They're having sex. They're doing drugs. All kinds of stuff. Uh, you know, by seventh grade, uh, whereas the Catholic school, I was in a Catholic school in eighth grade, nobody was having sex. Not one person. Nobody was doing drugs. Nobody I even knew of was smoking cigarettes. Because, uh, you know, we knew, I knew all the kids and, and there was nothing going on. I actually kind of liked this one Italian girl and I found her number somehow and I called her and her father talked to me. sis. My daughter's too young to talk to boys. Don't you ever call my house again? I'm like, okay. <laughs> I never called her again. That's that's the excitement of romance in eighth grade at a Catholic school. Um, let's see here. What else? In a homeschool, you know, the parents are teaching it or a friend of the parents. They care about the kids. They're going to teach the kid to respect their parents' value, their parents' religion. You know, people grow up mentally stronger and they have that alternative perspective when they've got uh, religion taught to them at a young age. Um, you know, there's none of this sexualization. Like, nowadays, it's crazy. You know, kids don't know what they're doing a lot of them. There are such things as biological real problems. But this whole idea of gender affirmation without parental consent, that's not fair to kids. Children need their parents to be involved in making important decisions, which might lead them to be infertile the rest of their life. That's only fair. You know, you need, you need your parents to make consent if you, you cut your arm and you need stitches or something. So, you know, your parents, a big decision like something that might make you infertile, that's pretty important. There should be parental involvement in it and find out if it's a real problem versus it's just a whim or if it's potentially all the contamination of the foods and the water supply with all these estrogenic chemicals that could very readily confuse a child in its uh, gender thoughts and whatnot. There's incredibly high amounts of estrogenic chemicals in the food supply, in the water supply, in the personal care products, etc. It's even in the air. There's, you know, aluminum in the air. Trust me, I've studied that one. You'd be surprised. All right, so anyways, what I'm saying is, is it time to return to the Catholic schools, the hedgerow schools, homeschooling? I think it is to the extent that's possible. I'm going to make some videos to all the stuff for free um, on study skills. Study skills can dramatically improve a student's ability. This is not widely known because public schools don't teach study skills. But it's like the most important thing you could teach because it'll be useful to them their entire rest of their life. So I'll start making a couple of videos on study skills. And I've also made a whole bunch of other videos because in a sense, good art, good music, these things are largely hidden from children. You know, children just going through a public school system, they listen to beat music that's just loud and obnoxious with no story. You can't even understand the words. They seldom read. They're kind of conditioned to hate reading after the freshman year of high school where they're forced to read stuff they're not ready for, like Great Expectorations of Dickens, uh, you know, Julius Caesar, etc., etc. Uh, so anyways, I'm going to make some homeschooling study skills videos uh, coming up.